The Standard was an imperial Russian yacht serving Emperor Nicholas II and his family. Being in its time, late 19th, early 20th century, the largest imperial yacht afloat. After the Russian Revolution the ship was placed in dry dock until 1936, when it was converted to a mine layer. During World War II, it participated in the defense of Leningrad. This handsome, ship of state, was a graceful seagoing vessel and was considered the most perfect ship of its type in the world. It was named after the famous frigate of Peter the Great. Built to the Tsar's own specifications, it was constructed in Copenhagen in 1895 by the Danish firm Burmeister Wayne, possibly owing to the fact that the Tsar's mother, the Dowager Empress Marie Fyodorovna was of Danish birth. The Standard was a superb, black-hulled 5,557-ton yacht measuring 401 feet in length and 50 feet wide, making it the largest private ship in the world. It much larger and faster than that of the other Imperial yachts, the Alexandria and the Polar Star reaching speeds of up to 21.18 knots. Anchored in a Baltic cove or tied up at Yalta, the Standard was as big as a small cruiser. It had been designed with the graceful majesty of a great sailing ship. She combined elegance and comfort and met all the requirements of a floating palace. A large bowsprit, covered with gold leaf, lunged forward from its bow and three tall masts towered above its two white funnels. White canvas awnings stretched over smooth decks shielding the passengers from the sun, while informal wicker furniture on the main deck invited relaxation. Also on the main deck was a huge dining saloon that could seat up to 72 guests at one long table for luncheon or dinner. Below deck was a formal reception salon and drawing rooms paneled in mahogany, polished floors, brass and elegantly hung crystal chandeliers and velvet drapes. The imperial yacht even had its own chapel for the private use of the imperial family. The Tsar's private study was furnished in dark leather and simple wooden furniture. The Tsarina's drawing room and boudoir were done in her favorite English chintz. On the walls could be found the indispensable icons or windows to heaven, along with many photographs of her relatives and family. Today there are hundreds of photographs in existence of the standard taken by the Tsar and his family, their relatives and aides, whom at the time were making the most of the latest craze of the upper classes, photography. These photographs were never meant for public viewing. Many were found in old family albums and memory books of the imperial family. On the standard, Tsar Nicholas II followed a daily routine. Early each morning he came on deck to check the weather. He also liked to make the rounds of the ship's company as well as greet the imperial yacht's warrant officers. It was not uncommon to see the young Tsarevich Alexis, wearing a sailor's uniform, accompany his father during these rounds. The Tsar was interested in navigation and he liked to discuss this subject with his flag captain, Admiral Nakov or as well as checking the yacht's course with Captain Zelnetsky. The Tsar worked for two days each week while at sea, receiving and sending dispatches by the courier boats that arrived daily from the mainland. When the Standard sailed, it was a glorious and spirited vessel and it attracted attention wherever it went. When the Tsar and his family were on board, a large household staff of footmen, stewards, butlers and cooks attended to their every need. In total it carried a crew of 275. The Grand Duchess Olga and Grand Duchess Tatiana often fondly recounted their dining experiences on the Standard in their diaries. The Romanov family breakfast menu on the Imperial yacht, the Standard, were barley soup, paroshki, salmon mayonnaise, English-style beef fillet, Cornish hen cutlets, pears in sherry, cowberry pie. The yacht was manned by a crew from the Russian Imperial Navy. Also on board was a platoon of marines as well as a brass band and a balalaika orchestra. In order to communicate with the mainland and other ships of the Russian Imperial Navy, the Standard was also equipped with radio, a novelty in 1912. The relationship of the Imperial family to its entourage was very friendly and informal, Count Grab recalls. They were especially cordial with the officers of the Standard. These young men were exemplary, charming, modest, possessed of a great deal of dignity and tact, and incapable of intrigue. The yacht was commanded by Rear Admiral Lohman, 
who was responsible for the safety of the Tsar from the moment Nicholas II set foot on board any vessel, whether a yacht, a dreadnought or a launch. The whole of the naval administration stood in mortal fear of the admiral, recalls A. A. Masalov. It is true that he asked a great deal, and if he was annoyed he could be extremely rude. He claimed that on board the yacht the Tsar himself was under high s orders. Off duty he was pleasant and sociable. The actual commanding officer of the standard was Captain Chagwin, and the second in command, Commander Sablin. Both had the satisfaction of being thought of very highly by their majesties. In the letters which she wrote to the Tsar when he was at general headquarters, the Tsarina frequently mentioned Sablin. Life at sea seemed to bring the best out in all the members of the imperial family. A. A. Masalov recalls in his memoirs, the Empress herself grew gay and communicative on board the Standart. She joined in the children's games, and had long talks with the officers. The officers were certainly in an exceptional situation. Almost daily, the Tsar invited these officers to dinner and after the meal liked to play billiards with them or enjoy a game of dominoes. In return, the imperial family accepted invitations to tea in the mess. On such occasions the Empress usually sat nearby, sewing, the Tsarevich ran about with his playmates, while the Grand Duchesses, surrounded by all the young men, scattered throughout the yacht. We form a united family, the Empress used to remark on these memorable and happy voyages. The family vacations to the Crimea and their cruises on the Standart were a welcome change for the children in particular. When the Imperial family went on board the Standart, each of the five children was assigned a diodka, a sailor charged to watch over the the child's personal safety. The children played with these diodkas, played tricks on the them and teased them. Gradually the young officers of the Standart joined in the children's games. As the Grand Duchesses grew older, the games changed into a series of flirtations, all very innocent of course. I do not, of course, use the word, flirtation, quite in the ordinary sense of the term, remarks Masalov, the young officers could better be compared with the pages or squires of dames of the Middle Ages. Many a time the whole of the young people dashed past me, but I never heard the slightest word suggestive of the modern flirtation. Moreover, the whole of these officers were polished to perfection by one of their superiors, who was regarded as the Empress Squire of Dames. As for the Grand Duchesses, even when the two eldest had grown up into real women, one might hear them taking like little girls of ten and twelve. The girls loved the sea, Count Grab comments, and I well remember their joyful anticipation of these cruises on the Standart, which opened broader horizons for them, brought them new contacts, and permitted an intimacy that was otherwise impossible. To be at sea with their father, that was what constituted their happiness. The Tsarevich Alexei also loved the excursions on the Standard as well. He enjoyed accompanying the Tsar while he carried out his duties on board the Imperial yacht. He loved to play games such as shuffleboard. On sunny afternoons it was not uncommon to find an exhausted Alexei stretched out and fast asleep under one of the many lifeboats on the main deck. At times, his hemophilia restricted his movements severely and photographs show the young Tsarevich walking with the aid of a cane. Due to his illness, a favorite sailor was assigned to watch over Alexei. At first it was the sailor Derevenko who for some time was patient and conscientious in watching over his imperial charge. His behavior toward Alexei, however, became excessively mean after the revolution. Fortunately, the Tsarevich also had another sailor attendant, the loyal Nagorny. This sailor was later killed by the revolutionary army that overran Russia after World War I so it was, that when the warm months of the summer rolled around that the Tsar and his family set sail on the Standart for their vacation off the coast of southern Finland. For the Tsar, there was no greater relaxation than these restful, seaborne excursions on his beloved Standart. Here his family and him found a secluded bay surrounded by small islands where they could relax and enjoy their time together away from the palaces and rigid rules that governed the Russian court. This charming spot was such a favorite of Nicholas II and his family, that they returned to it every year and the children even nicknamed it the Bay of Standart. While anchored in the bay, 
The Imperial family lived on board the Standard, but every day they would get into small launches and head for their chosen island. The island was uninhabited, which offered them complete freedom to picnic, relax, and enjoy the outdoors without fear of being observed by prying eyes. It was also on this little island that a tennis court was built for the Imperial family, tennis being a favorite of the entire Imperial household. Many a royal personage was made welcome on board the Standard, including Queen Alexandra, sister of the Dowager Empress Marie, accompanied by her husband, King Edward VII, King Gustav of Sweden and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany. Early in June 1914, as usual at this time of the year, the Tsar and his family went on a voyage to the Finnish fjords. The weather was hot, and stifling heat was interspersed with pouring rain. This year, Tsar Nicholas II was not to enjoy the picturesque landscape and relax with the serene joys of family life, since the end of June one piece of bad news had followed another. The assassination of the Austrian Archduke Francis Ferdinand, whom Nicholas and Alexandra had known very well, and the attempt on the life of Rasputin, disrupted the mental equilibrium of the imperial couple. Within weeks, war was declared and the standard, by order of the Tsar was placed in dry dock, and never again returned to the tranquility of the Finnish or Crimean coastlines. After the revolution, the former imperial yacht was destined to be stripped of all its former elegance. In 1917, the standard was renamed Vosomnet Saint Martsa. In 1932, it was renamed Marty. Between then and December 1936, it was refitted as a drab, gray mine layer at the Marty Yard in Leningrad for service in the Soviet Navy. The heavy gun armament was fitted, as were mine rails. There were four rails on the mine deck, and two more on the upper deck. The mine deck could carry 580 mines, and 200 could be accommodated on the upper deck. With the German invasion of Russia, the Marty laid some 3,159 mines, and bombarded shore positions near Leningrad. On 23 September 1941, Marty was damaged in an air attack at Kronstadt, but was quickly repaired to resume action on 26 of the same month. In autumn 1941, some of its guns W. Air used ashore at Leningrad. After the war, Marty was refitted and converted to a training ship, renamed Oka. During the refit, the steam engines were replaced by diesels. She was scrapped at Tallinn in Estonia in 1963.